I'm a software engineer with more than 10, year, 10 years of experience in various type of technologies. Um, as many of us, I started with PHP, and then switched to Python, uh, a little bit of Java, uh, but one day I fell in love with JS, uh, and especially with the React uh, JS library. So last, I would say seven or six, no, maybe seven years, I work as front-end lead at Bluedrop. Um, Bluedrop is uh, one of the many projects in uh, SoftSoft. So um, my today's presentation is going to be about uh, how to do front end ahead of backend. Um, the problematic, uh, everybody uh, would like to make a code clear, nice and stable without, without being under the pressure and not to hurry. But in the real world, uh, business wants us to deliver features as soon as possible. Uh, because of this, we have to figure out how to speed up our development process. And one of the most obvious ways would be to start development of front end in parallel with backend, or even earlier if it's possible. But how to do that, especially if you need to implement complex page, which is going to interact with the uh, API in many different ways. So here I will uh, try to show you my receipt uh, I used for more than a year, I think, and uh, I'm still happy about it. Uh, ingredients, React.js uh, as root of everything with its awesome context API. You may love it or hate it, but you know what it is for sure. Uh, Apollo client library, uh, which is a GraphQL client and stage state management library. Or uh, you may use Tanstack React query as an alternative. I already tried and uh, this receipt uh, is suitable for the case with the Tanstack React query as well. Uh, storybook, a thing that gives us the power to build UIs in uh, isolation. Uh, mock service worker, uh, the library helps us to mock an API by intercepting requests on the network level. Just, um, just testing framework of my choice. Uh, React testing library helps us to test UI components in user centric way. And the uh, testing library uh, JS DOM extension, which just a set of custom DOM element matchers to make our life a little bit easier. <laughs> the plan. We are going to create single page application on the main page of this application, some GitHub repository brief information are going are going to be shown. Uh, as well, here on the same page uh, will be a button to show the list of issues from the same GitHub repository. Um, each issue data are going to be presented by a separate road, and we will be able to react on each issue or undo our reaction. Um, as a goal, I want to show every component of application to be working without being connected to real backend, and then we will connect it smoothly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about architecture of this project. Um, usually, I differentiate uh, application by the following group of code. Components, just general purpose components um, that render common UI things such as server boundary, progress bar, data grid, dialects, and so on and so forth. Uh, hooks, uh, general purpose React hooks that may be needed anywhere in the application, such as use language, use date format, uh, many others. 
providers. Um, by provider, I mean any component or hook that provides something like data, context, or general behavior. Uh, for example, the provider of uh, Google Maps API that manages API keys loads a script from Google CDN and initiates services, uh, instantiate services that the application uh, needs and provide uh, the services via context API. In this directory, I also implement the code that uh, interact with backend, transform the data, receive it uh, to the format other application components understand. Uh, I call that kind of components data providers. And this is the core of uh, the receipt I am going to share. Also, modules uh, are usually represent core of business logic, separate application pages, screens, dialogues, and their sub -modules. Also, there may be a utils directory, uh, miscellaneous code such as helpers, general purpose functions, and other that cannot be placed in directories described above. Storybook space uh, where it keeps its configuration and as well as decorators that may be used across all the stories. And the test directory uh, with the test render functions, transformers, general stubs, box helpers, decorators, and so on and so forth. So, um, I have created several texts for quick navigation through implementation stage. So I, I don't want to spend your time on real coding. This is a project uh, we are going to talk about. This is the directory. I just mentioned it, uh, storybook one and test one. And um, this is the step one, so just uh, base uh, state of uh, current application, which uh, actually do nothing except of provide except several routes and uh, empty pages like this. So does not do uh, nothing real. Um, there are there are already a couple of providers such as Apollo and Vim, but uh, this is Apollo client uh, provider and Vim provider, nothing interesting for us uh, in the current state. Uh, uh, also, there are already implemented repo model, which uh, renders uh, repository information page and the issue model, which uh, should render uh, issues details page but uh, as you can see just say repo detail no real information currently and uh, uh, so there uh, let's check out the step one And uh, here, uh, how we here we are going to see how we will fetch data uh, and render it. Apollo client library uh, gives us several React hooks uh, like use query, use uh, lazy query to fetch data on demand. Uh, use mutation to perform surprise mutations. Uh, and uh, we want to show repo information somehow. Uh, sorry, it should be a storybook. It shouldn't be an application. Uh, uh, we want to show repo information somehow. So um, we need to query it. Currently, we do not have a backend yet, but we know that uh, the schema of query are going to be um, like this. How do I know that? Uh, because uh, usually um, we can uh, agree 
with the backend team uh, before starting an implementation, we can agree on some contract how our front end will interact with backend and we, what data backend will provide us in uh, which format. So the schema is already there. And also we uh, know that this schema uh, should uh, give us response like this. So we already have the schema and response file saved in our repository. So we can start to work on a data provider. Uh, the data provider consists. One moment, I lost. Uh, the data provider consists of um, several things like. Uh, use fetch hook, which uh, really fetch data from the backend, uh, data provider component, which render this hook, uh, context provider, which uh, consumes uh, information from uh, use fetch hook and will give, uh, will provide this context to anything that renders under this context provider. So we are able to, how it's possible. One moment, I'm sorry. We can render uh, any component, let's name it like context consumer under the context provider. And this context consumer uh, now are able to consume uh, information from uh, this context with the help of uh, use fetch context hook. Uh, and uh, then uh, this context consumer will do something like render progress bar in case of loading, uh, render error fallback in case of error, uh, empty fallback in case of no data presented and uh, data representation in case of something is there. Uh, so how it's uh, built. <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, our use fetch hook, which actually render use query hook from uh, Apollo client library, uh, fetches information uh, from the backend using the query schema I showed you earlier, and uh, it should return some result. Result is just an ob object with uh, several uh, properties like loading state, error state, and actually data. So uh, here in the result, we have a data property and we need to transform it to uh, the um, form our components and application are going to understand. So this is uh, why I have extract function here. You can name it uh, however you want, but uh, I name it as like extract. So you see that uh, extract data uh, transforms uh, this nested structure of response to something uh, more flat and uh, easier to work with. So nothing really interesting, but just a trick. And then uh, we render our uh, use fetch under uh, fetch uh, component, which is data provider. So we pass the result of use fetch into context provider. Uh, but we do not have a backend yet, but we want to be sure that our uh, context provider works fine. So we are able to create use fetch test. And here we can verify that uh, if we render our, uh, sorry, if we render our uh, use fetch function with uh, such parameters, uh, it renders use query one time, it consumes parameters and uh, it responds with uh, the data we expect. So, 
actually here we uh, can verify that our response translated into uh, data object uh, for comparison this is a response object sample of response object actually and this is the data object you see that uh, created add field translated to date object uh, in the response is just an uh, ISO date string. And also uh, this level of uh, nesting uh, disappeared here. This is what uh, transform uh, extract data function do. So here we, uh, tested our uh, use fetch hook. Uh, but now we want to apply this uh, data provider to some real model. And uh, here in the REPA model, we uh, render this fetch repo data provider, as you can see. We pass properties into it, uh, which we get from uh, route. And uh, we can render to different components, uh, like repo details and issues. Uh, repo details consumes uh, content, uh, context of uh, fetch uh, data provider and use it somehow. So as I show it on this uh, slide, it just uh, check the states and render uh, appropriate thing. Like uh, if it's loading, we render progress bar. If it's error, we render error. If there is no data, we render no data. And if everything is okay, we are able to render uh, our data representation component. Uh, but how to see the result? Uh, we do not have a backend, uh, and we let's say we do not have an application yet, but we want to see result. Uh, yeah, this is the storybook, uh, and this is a repo model. And this is how it looks uh, in a storybook without a real query to the backend, how it works. Thanks to uh, mock service library, we are able to mock uh, requests on the network layer. And instead of uh, request real backend, uh, we get a re response uh, from this file. Uh, so if we change something in this file, uh, we will see how it affects on our application. So let's do it to check. You see. So it's not really a backend. And uh, this is uh, the main idea. Uh, we uh, did not query real backend. We rendered uh, part of our application. Uh, so now we, can, we want to see how we can integrate this model in our uh, application actually, and how it will interact with real backend. So let's go to the application. Let's reload the page. And here is the result. As a proof, because from this response, we cannot be sure uh, whether it mocked or not. Uh, as a proof, we can uh, change uh, this parameters to any repository name and owner we know, and we'll see different results. For example, uh, I remember another my 
that is QB your recorder and we here we can see here different uh, data so we requested another uh, repo and we got another response um, next step um, we from our plan we would like to see the list of issues on this page issues uh, from this uh, repository so let me switch to original repo uh, we do not see any issues here yet but i know they are exist so the only thing we need is to implement a model under this button uh, which will query issues and render them uh, very really similar to what we already have done with uh, fetch repo information. So let me switch to step two. Mm. Now we have fetch issues data provider. You see the structure completely the same. Use fetch hook, uh, fetch uh, data provider, fetch issues query. Uh, the example, a sample of response and a sample of data we are going to have uh, as a result. So uh, the only thing we need is to render uh, this issues model uh, being wrapped by fetch issues data provider. And under this fetch issues data provider, we render issues list, which consumes the context of this provider and render uh, data representation component. So completely the same. The only one difference is uh, it uh, uh, rendered conditionally only in case we have uh, issues state uh, set to true because we want to render it only in case we click this uh, button. But let's uh, first uh, see how it works in Storybook. If we click want to see issues, we see issues. Mm, but they are not real issues, actually. They are uh, issues from our uh, sample uh, a response, sorry, sample. You see, here is two of them. And for example, if I change this, we see that it changed here. And uh, so we implemented two models um, without being connected to backend how it works in real application with real backend. Just in case we load the page, when I click this button, we see fetching state and we see issues, different issues from real repo. If I click for the first one, for example, uh, aha, I forget, this is about uh, step three. Uh, we do not see issues data before we did not implement uh, fetching of uh, issue data yet. But we are able to navigate to a uh, new uh, route, which represents issue ID. And we're able to go back. <clears throat> so uh, let's implement third step, which is about uh, fetching issues data. Uh, I need just to check out to the step three. And uh, once I have checked out, I see fetch issue data provider for the single one. So again, 
when we started to work on this task, we agreed uh, with uh, our backend team that uh, backend will uh, accept this kind of schema and will respond to us with this kind of response. Later, we as front-end developers, uh, after inspecting of this response, we can decide what data we really want to see and in which format in our application. So we prepare a data sample uh, to be able to test this component, uh, this uh, fetching hook to verify that this uh, response translates to this uh, data object. And uh, later we can implement issue model, uh, which consumes, uh, renders actually a fetch issue data provider, render issue details component, and uh, this one consumes uh, fetch issue context and render uh, representation component. How we behave in a storybook. <clears throat> this is issue model. Uh, looks like I missed something. Give me a second. Uh, this is a step three. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, for example, um, here in the storybook, we render our model, issue model. This is issue model component. We need to pass uh, initial values to our router uh, decorator. So our model can uh, extract these values here later. And also, we need to pass uh, MSW handlers. MSW, this is a property provided by uh, Mock Service Worker Library uh, for the storybook, Mock Service Library uh, plugin for the story, storybook. And thanks to that, we are able to pass uh, handlers, which uh, will intercept uh, request to uh, our with our with the schema we expect and return the result with response we want so this is how our, how it actually works uh, but it doesn't fetch issue uh, why won't it doesn't by the way ah I had to reload the page completely. <clears throat> uh, this is the issue details. Uh, and uh, we patched it uh, using mock service worker. So this is uh, the request, this is the response, and this is the result. So we can uh, the ch change uh, our uh response sample and see the result uh, page for example i want to change i would say reaction uh, reload page and now we see a heart highlighted instead of uh, right emoji. So uh, and now right emoji again. Uh, if we go to the real application to verify that everything worked with real backend, we have to Reload the page just in case. Then see the issues list. Uh, when I click the issue title, we see the issue details. Let's click for another one, demo issue number seven. And uh, this is the list of 
available emojis, uh, reactions. But when we click on reaction, we see not implemented yet because it's not implemented yet. And as I promised, uh, the uh, reaction is going to be implemented as the last step. Uh, to do that, we need to check out the step four, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, now we see two new context providers. They are a little bit different in comparison to previous three one, uh, because we do not need a context provider here. We just use uh, a hook to uh, perform mutation. Uh, let's start from end reaction. It's more logical. We need to perform a hook uh, perform mutation to change something on the backend, but we do not need context of it. In case we will need that, we can implement it, but uh, in my uh, example, uh, I do not need that. Uh, we have a mutation schema defined, uh, and uh, we know that the schema will respond us with uh, something like this. So as a result of this mutation, we want to have <coughs> this kind of data. Uh, because of that, we are able to test this hook. So uh, here, uh, you see, it should perform mutation. We render our hook. Render is just a facade. And uh, here, uh, thanks to React hook library with the uh, uh, render hook, uh, their render hook function, uh, we can uh, render hooks without being wrapped uh, with component. So we can render hook and uh, interact with uh, it in this way. So uh, result current because it uh, use uh, references under the hood actually. And uh, as you may see here, we return a tuple uh, where uh, the first entity is a function, our handler function, and the second entity is um, result object. So here we want to execute first entity from this tuple with these properties. And uh, as a result, we expect our data. This one. Uh, so, thanks to that, we verified that our hook uh, transforms this response to this data. Uh, yeah, uh, here, how it implemented. We render use mutation hook with mutation schema, this one, and uh, additional options if we need that, but we do not need them uh, here in this example currently. Uh, use mutation who provides us a tuple uh, of handler and result. So we are able to reuse this handler, handler in, inside our custom handler. So to uh, make our interface a little bit simpler to interact with because uh, in case we're going to use mutations, we need to pass variables with all their names. So thanks to this function, we are able to decorate it, uh, not decorate it, to hide this complexity under the hood. So we expose a little bit simpler interface. Currently we accept just issues AD and the uh, reaction object. And also uh, here, we want to be sure that our response is valid. So we extract the data from the response. If something broken here, uh, this line will throw an error and we won't clear the cache. We will see uh, this error. 
uh, but if everything is okay, we have to clear the cache because um, Apollo client library gives us a beautiful thing. Uh, we do not care uh, about uh, refetching data manually. Uh, so once we clear the cache, Apollo client library will fetch the query related to this cache item automatically. So once we clean, clean this item, uh, the data will be refetched automatically. Uh, cache GC is just garbage collector. We can avoid of using here. Uh, you can read about it in the documentation. It's not interesting to us uh, now. So um, this is how uh, our uh, mutation uh, mutations implemented. We have it tested here. Uh, so we want to integrate it into real model. Uh, if we go into our data representation container uh, com component, uh, data representation component just renders issue information. Here is the title, here is the body and reactions of it. This is a component which, re which renders this line. This is reactions. Uh, once we render it reactions component, we see we can consume uh, issue context. Here is the data, here is reactions from this data. So we render a list of reactions, but we want to uh, interact with them. Here is a couple of functions like on add and on remove. Uh, and this is on add function. Uh, here, add reaction function. This is a first item from the hook sorry from the hook i showed you a minute ago so this add reaction actually the same thing as uh, this one so once we execute uh, this function uh, it's uh, it returns a promise so we are able to wait on the result of it uh, before doing that we include uh, we uh, change the pending state of current reaction to see the progress and once it finishes, it in any cases uh, finish it with success or not we exclude a pending so we uh, unset a loading state from this reaction and in case of error, we just alert error message. It's just a quick solution for the demonstration. In real application, uh, actually, we have some uh, notifications of systems. Uh, yeah. And here, once we execute, uh, when we execute this function, function, we have to provide an issue ID. Uh, so this issue ID. Uh, we can get from uh, route or from uh, issue data. I, I ex extracted it from issue data because uh, uh, to me it uh, looks more stable. And the uh, reaction object. Mm. Reaction object came from uh, this list. So it actually object exposed by this function. I don't think it's really interesting, but later you will be able to investigate this uh, repository if you're really interested in. Uh, okay, we executed uh, this function, so we want to have to have, to see the result. Let's go to the storybook, and for example, if we click on this one. No, let's start from scratch. If we click for uh, on the rocket icon, we see that uh, response some query uh, executed. So it was add reaction query with content 
bracket and the subject ID is just a uh, um, ID of issue, uh, but store it in a GitHub database. And uh, as a result, we see uh, this one. So it's uh, actually, I'm sorry, actually this one. If I change here in a res uh, response sample, change content to be hard and reload the page. When I click rocket button, we see that here is hard instead of uh, rocket. Uh, but I did not implement uh, the change of uh, state on reactions in storybook because uh, just because I didn't want to spend the time on it because it's not that easy because uh, the state of uh, the reaction on this list will be changed in case uh, Apollo client refetch uh, data from the backend, but we do not fetch real data here. So uh, it's not implemented in storybook, but let's uh, verify it works in uh, real application with a real backend. If we reload the page, we can click, for example, the rocket button, rocket icon. And now you see it's highlighted because we reacted to it. When we click on eyes, and now you see it's highlighted because uh, when we add reaction, eyes, it automatically refetch issue data. And uh, in response, we see a new list of reactions. Previous fetch issue returned us just single reaction, but next one returned us two of them. So, and uh, the similar thing, uh, similar situation with the uh, remove reaction. Completely the same flow, completely the same implementation, uh, except of uh, schema and uh, I think response. Now response looks really similar, uh, similar except of uh, property, this property. But it's not that interesting. So here, uh, in use remove reaction, we perform uh, mutation with this mutation schema. And uh, it will change information about reactions on specific issue on the end. And after that, uh, after success, we clear the cache. So it will per uh, force uh, refetching of uh, issue data with uh, its reactions. So we will see the result immediately on the screen. Like this, when I click on eyes icon, we see remove reaction uh, query performance and uh, re issue data refetched and only one reaction here in the list of reactions. So, um, I think this is it. Uh, I tried um, to cover the most often cases in this presentation. Uh, it should be this one. Uh, yeah, um, but you may still find some more spatial cases like server side filtering, pagination, um, data refetching, polling, and many others. Uh, in this time slot, I can only say that I had an experience with all of them. And uh, they are can be handled by this solution very well. <laughs> Just believe me. Uh, also, the solution may help you to cover uh, by integration tests as many critical cases as you need. Yeah, 
So apologize if this presentation was uh, worded scrumply. I hope we still have a time for questions. So uh, if you have any, please go for it. I will do my best to give you a correct answer. And by the way, uh, the demonstration repository is available on GitHub. You can visit it by scanning QR code on the screen, or I can send a link to this one in our chat if you really want to uh, you can investigate. Add, uh, uh, so you can add this link uh, in our blog post uh, after this presentation and uh, we will share it with okay. you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Sergei, thanks uh, for this presentation, guys. Uh, if uh, someone has a question, please unmute and ask or use chat. One question. Uh, could you please show once again your realization in Storybook because it was very fast and I didn't get how Sorry. you implement this. Sorry for that. Uh, let's open some, the most simpler, the first one, uh, repo uh, repository uh, information model. Here is the storybook of it. And uh, here we have a couple of stories fulfilled uh, just to render for fulfilled component. Uh, fulfilled model. Also, we are able to <clears throat> to see how slow query. Uh, in case of slow, how we render our comment, uh, component in case of slow query, and uh, also we can use play function to interact with the story. Uh, actually. It you really useful in case uh, you want to cover your project with a, I would say, screenshot testing. If you know what I'm talking about, uh, there is a chromatic uh, service which allows you to make screenshots of your uh, stories, and then it will compare uh, older screenshot with newer and will report you the difference. It really helps uh, in case of component libraries and so on. Um, so here we, as I already showed, were using um, uh, router decorator, we uh, pass uh, parameters for the router to give the model uh, understanding where we are rendered on which page. And here we pass uh, the handlers uh, for this uh, model. So we know that this model relies on two queries, uh, fetch repo and fetch issues. So we pass them as queries. Actually, this query function is just my um, uh, High level uh, thing, uh, my, my wrapper around uh, MSW uh, functions, um, just to make my life a little bit easier because a uh, real query function from uh, MSW library wants us to pass the name of query. But I didn't want to pass the name here because in case I change the name of query, I will need to change this name in every single story. So I will have to find every single story with the same name and change them. So I uh, implemented uh, extract operation name function under the hood. Uh, it will extract the name of query uh, just from query schema file and we'll pass the name here and uh, create MSW callback again. It's my own uh, helper 
So here I am able to pass object or function in case we want to test, uh, let's say, um, filtering thing. So we will able to execute this function under the hood with uh, request properties. Uh, this uh, query uh, accepts something like that. Um, something else, maybe I described it not really good. Maybe you have more queries. Oh, thank you. It's more clear because we use storybook only for components, and it's good that we can like do like this. Uh, we can do a lot of things uh, using storybook. Uh, it's really awesome stuff. Uh, for example, uh, I didn't show you how to mock mutations, but I don't remember where they are. Issue details, I believe. Yeah. So you see, uh, again, parameters, it's a storybook uh, property, storybook specific property, which accepts uh, any properties we can use uh, later in a uh, main storybook render file, like, like this. So here by default, I instantiated actions, controls, backgrounds, but also, this parameters will go uh, into storybook render. For example, here in decorators, uh, you see decorator code with router. This is my own, but I know that there is specific plugin for storybook, which do a uh, really similar thing. I just implemented it earlier than they <laughs> for my project and still use it. Uh, it is a function which returns a decorator. Decorator uh, accepts story as the first parameter and object uh, with many properties and one of them is parameters. And uh, these parameters, you see parameters router, this is what we uh, passed here. So similar similar thing with uh, MSW parameters, but it's uh, hidden uh, under MSW uh, storybook plugin. That's it. More questions? Yeah, we have uh, a bit minutes uh, for one question. <laughs> 